I think the one thing that differentiates this movie from the previous movie is it's got uh, some more playful magic in it and we've tried to sort of pull the charm of the original stories back. Um, Jacob Kowalski is back, the only muggle in the group who's um, a bit out of his depth in the magical world but he's our ticket into the magical world um, and it was important to us as the themes are quite esoteric to have as much fun with the story at the same time. There's a balance between light and shade. You want the, the, the experience for the audience to be fun, um, but at the same time, you want it to be emotional as well. I went to a restaurant the other night and I had a very nice meal and I came out to get in the car and this waiter ran out after me and my wife, just as we were getting in the car. And this waiter said to me, can I just have a word, please? And I said, yeah, hello. And I thought, we paid the bill, didn't we? <laughs> and he said to me, and this guy was probably in his late 20s, and he said, thank you for making my childhood so memorable. I didn't want to say that in the restaurant to you, but I want to say it to you now. I want to say thank you. So you go, well, these films have a place in people's lives, and you know, for the people who, who these films speak to, um, we have made something that is, you know, helpful <laughs> and special and important, and that's cool, and that's good, because you aspire as a storyteller to do that. At the beginning of the movie, um, Dumbledore has to recruit a, a team, if you like, to help him defeat Grindelwald. And the team is led by Newt's commander. Um, and he persuades Newt to bring along his brother, Theseus Scamander, who knows the ministries of Berlin and London inside out. Um, another member of the team is Lally Hicks. Lally's a great, brilliant professor at Ilvermorny School of Magic in America. Uh, Lally's an amazing charms teacher. Um, and they also have a, a wonderful character from film two called Karma. Um, and Karma is, has a sort of vendetta of his own against Grindelwald um, and has some pretty powerful magic of his own. And then um, finally to the team they recruit Jacob Kowalski, who's a muggle baker, uh, an essential member of the team, a, a, an innocent to the magical world who is persuaded to come back and join them on their adventure. Um, and Dumbledore recruits this mini army, if you like, to take on Grindelwald. Where do I start with Jude? Because he is such a pleasure to work with. He's curious and he'll try anything in terms of exploring who the human being is. Um, very passionate about digging into the kind of um, the side of Dumbledore that we're not so familiar with, the, the, the sort of darker, more melancholic side of Dumbledore, the Dumbledore who's dealing with grief and um, a sense of guilt about building this destructive ideology with Grindelwald. So those are sort of colours that we haven't necessarily seen before. And also a version of Dumbledore which is this real rebel and revolutionary, if you like. So. Um, and I think the best moments with Dumbledore and with Jude are when he's being quite anarchic, when the sort of mood music that he, he has is not consistent. It's kind of like playing jazz. You kind of, he's laughing one minute and then he's very serious the next. And I think that sort of version of Dumbledore is one we were quite excited about exploring. What I love about Eddie is he's so committed and enthusiastic and determined to get things and explore every aspect of the character. He just gives it his all and to the point where he's exhausted at the end. So um, there is, and that says a lot about Eddie, he's, he's, um, he's a consummate professional who just wants it to rock uh, when he comes to work. You know, if you meet Eddie and then you look at Newt, there's a transformation right there. There's a kind of, he's able to make a leap into another human being's skin and become that human being in a way that feels um, natural and authentic.
In terms of bringing Mads in, it was not too complicated. I literally, I think I said on the Thursday, I think we should cast Mads. I ran it past Joe, David, the studio. Everyone said, yeah, Mads will be great. I literally was on the phone to him that Saturday. I said, we've got a script, will you read it? We'd love you to come in. Mads is like extraordinary. He's an extraordinary actor, performer. Um, really sort of special and and so there wasn't really anyone else. He's just a real uh, grounded um, human being, very funny um, and then can switch on a sixpence to deliver a performance and always curious to try things, very open, very collaborative, um, a genuine pleasure to work to work with. Um, and we were very lucky to have him. Ezra um, Credence in this film is effectively um, looking to avenge the, f the family that has abandoned him. So he's, his understanding, his perception of what's happened before is that he was abandoned by the Dumbledore family and now he just wants to strike back. And Ezra is a really, I love working with Ezra because, you know, he's a fine actor, a really fine actor, um, but he's also enormous fun to work with. And he's like Eddie, you know, he never, you know, he'll never, he'll always want to give you as much as possible for, for you know, for a moment and a, and a, and a scene. So Jessica Williams plays Eulali Hicks and she's the, a uh, charms teacher at uh, Ilvermorny School of uh, Magic in America, and she is amazing. I mean, she's she's kind of. A, I said to my editor when we first started putting the film together, we were shooting it and we edited some of uh, uh, Jessica's scenes together, and I just thought, oh, Jess is a breath of fresh air into this world. It's lovely to get her. And you know, Jess is a comedian. Jessica's a comedian and an actor. So she just brought a vibe that I, um, I really enjoyed. The films offer a great latitude that have always offered a great, you know, Beast Three's got a little horror movie in the middle of it with the manticores. It's got a love story at the heart of it. It's got an action sequence um, with a fight between, you know, I get to do all these different genres in one. So from a filmmaking point of view, I'm never going, oh, I've just done that. I'm always flexing a different group of muscles in each film because they, these movies are broad enough and big enough to allow you to try different things. 